Is isolation good for artists? Our answers may surprise you, or maybe they won't, on this episode of The Overthinkers. Hello, thinking men's thinking people. Welcome to The Overthinkers. I am your host, Joseph Holmes, filmmaker, film critic, Chris Pratt fanboy. And here with me today is my cantankerous co-host. Nathan Clarkson, author, artist, and actor, and filmmaker, and Robert Downey Jr. enthusiast. So, good choice. Uh, if, we're going, good choice. We're, if we're going Avengers. Uh, exactly. Go <laughs> yes, exactly. My man. <laughs> All good choices. All right. Today, we're asking the question of whether or not isolation is good for artists. With the pandemic of 2020, there has been a lot of articles written about what artists are doing in the pandemic. On the one hand, the pandemic has been very bad for artists in obvious ways. Movies and Broadway have shut down production, and regular customers are tightening their wallets, leaving many artists unemployed. NPR reports that two-thirds of artists now appear to be unemployed. On the other hand, many artists, ones even that I've talked to, have expressed about how they felt more encouraged uh, during the time they've had by themselves without feeling pressure to take part in social activities or other activities they otherwise would have, they have more time to focus on the craft, gain new skills, and even time to gain more community through Zoom chats than they've had before. There's a meme going around that Shakespeare wrote King Lear during the pandemic, so what are you doing? According to Business Insider, 54% of Americans want to keep working remotely after the pandemic is over. Given that, we're wondering if this kind of isolation is good for artists and is it something to cultivate in ways after this is over that are not dependent upon global pandemics? <laughs> if not, what is the best way for artists to live in these kind of ways? So, Nathan, you hate people. <laughs> I, I imagine that this time has been very encouraging for you. Has it? If so, and if it has been, how do you plan to impose your preferences on everybody else? Oh, well, I've been trying for about 31 years to impose my <laughs> on everyone else. Thus far, no one is on board. <laughs> but this oh, well. has been an interesting experience because I, I, you know, pretty quickly, as soon as the pandemic began, I saw the meme that you referenced about um, Shakespeare hadn't written King Lear while he was in quarantine uh, during the plague. Um, and it, it's interesting. I think as you it, that kind of reflects this idea that goes even further than just a pandemic. If you look through history at all these different artists who get a lot of attention, there's kind of this a fantasy about them, about the you know the secluded, uh, right. alone artist who creates the work in his workshop, alone away right. from the world. And all of a sudden, we have found ourselves alone in our workshops, away from the world, um, which is very much forced upon us. And you have all these artists all of a sudden saying oh, wow, um, you know, I, I dream about this, I talk about this, maybe because they live in a busy life, in a busy world that's overscheduled, and then all of a sudden they have all this time, and then um, they have the this, this seclusion that we've all kind of dreamt right. about, and I find a lot of my friends are going, wow, I don't know if this was entirely helpful. You know, mm. and, and just from my own experience, I am an artist, I write, I uh, do poetry, I write screenplays, I do most of my work um, behind the scenes very often. You know, it's right. the far between. You know, people, you know, realize this, but in, you might see an actor in two movies um, in a year, but that's maybe, maybe two months of actually engaging most of the work of artists is behind the scenes, is on couches, in apartments, right. in offices alone. And so now I'm being kind of forced into this and I'm looking at my own schedule and the kind of what's gone on. And I'm starting to question how... Uh, important uh, extended isolation is. Because when right. I first started, I thought, I'm going to write the next great American novel. And <laughs> yeah. I got about a half a chapter in before my mind just kind of went kaput. And, you know, I wanted to be one of these guys who came out of it. And, you know, I have two screenplays and Amer in the next great American novel. Yeah. And I have you know, all these things because of the seclusion. It's so good. And I found that extended seclusion actually almost made me less productive because and I, I don't exactly know I have to do some more introspection but I found um that that it wore on my mind just being alone sure yeah inside of this room day after day after day after day and quiet it wasn't ultimately um good for yeah I could say me but ultimately you know the subject is art I would say it actually hindered my creative process that's in, fascinating. In the way that I thought as soon as I got rid of business 
it'd be perfect. And it didn't, which is interesting. And we'll have to explore a little bit of that. How about for you? How was this whole experience? So, you know, it's it's been really, for me, the, it was, I, I really was, in terms of, you know, my art, it was very helpful for me to have a lot more time to focus and devote on my art and my artistry. I was able to, you know, put a lot more into it and get a lot more focus and get a lot more headway in that respect. And, you know, I, you know, I joke like, you know, 80% of my life didn't change because I, you know, <laughs> I work from home and I spend a lot of time at home. I like to be at home, but you know, the part of it that was, and honestly, like, again, I'm, I'm one of the people who I connected in many ways with more with people through zoom than I had before in many ways, because like, you know, if you're, if, if you're saying, Hey, let's get together and have a conversation and you have to say, okay, we all have to go, you know, from our place, you know, or all our, our, you know, I have to go all the way up to Manhattan or we have to schedule a time when we can actually be together. They might say, Oh, this will take a few weeks. But if it's, you say, Oh, it's a zoom chat in uh it was like, it was a Zoom chat. It's like, what, you don't have like, you know, 30 minutes to like just turn your computer on, you know, when you're on it all day. And so there's certain, certain ways in which it's been very helpful in, in, in that. But I'm also in a very, again, a very blessed place right now where my art that I'm doing right now is mostly solitary, like you said. You know, if I was trying to, you know, put together a movie, you know, that, that was as a, I had a finished screenplay and it was already and it was ready to shoot, like I would be, you know, out, I would be out of luck. And then there's a lot of people who are artists who the, the necessary, it is necessarily collaborative. And I think so, you know, one of the things we have to say is like, okay, there's a difference between introverted artists and extroverted artists, you know, there's, you know, some, and you know, some people, if they're, if you're an introvert, this might be really helpful for you to focus, but also, or, but if you're an extrovert, not. And also if you're in a more private kind of artistry, this might be helpful for you. But if you're in a more collaborative sphere, it might not. The other thing to, to, to say is that, are you somebody, because even if you're an, an, an artist, you know, you still rely upon, you need, you need certain things. You need to be organized. You need to have discipline. You need to have, um, oh, I had a third thing. It's like, you need to have certain <laughs> other, other aspects of your life taken care of. I mean, you do need community. And so the thing is, if you're a person who is, you know, disorganized, you're not going to suddenly become organized once you're isolated. You know, mm. if you are someone who, who doesn't have community and doesn't have those strong bonds that you need to support you, you're not going to suddenly, that's only be worse if you're, you know, if you're, uh, and you don't make an effort for it while you're in isolation, you're, you're not going to, you know, suddenly have that when you're uh, in isolation. Um, and, and that's why like a lot of people, you know, a lot of people who make their best stuff when they are, you know, I mean, Jane Austen wrote a lot of her stuff while she was still living at home. You know, the, the you know, Stephen King wrote his great stuff while he was married and he had his wife sort of being able to take care of all the other stuff for mm. him that he needed. And so I think the big question is isolation can get rid of distractions for an artist in many cases. But the question is, are other things that you need as a human being being taken care of um, while you have that isolation? That's interesting because you were right. Uh, uh, um, isolation. I know. Can take I care love. Of... But tell me again. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Joseph, you are right. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Go on. It's interesting you say that isolation takes care of distractions. And as I look at myself um, pre quarantine, I was overwhelmed. I was working all the time. I was trying to yeah. see friends. I was doing church. I was doing groups, I was meeting with people, all of on top of trying to stay on top of my email, trying to stay up on my correspondence. And that's not even talking about the times I actually wanted to write and work on my right. art. And so it felt like art was taking this back seat when that was really the thing I wanted to do. And so I think a lot of people feel that. They feel like the right. whole world is very distracting um, and that if they could just have this time to do their art, that they would. And But I think that there, there's a false belief in there. Right. And that's what, that's what I believe too, is that isolation creates inspiration. So it does take care of distractions. Isolation. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily beget inspiration. And I think right. every artist is looking for inspiration. And we have this idea, this fantasy that maybe when we go into isolation with everything quiet, with the world, you know, kind of uh, uh, outside of our uh, uh, world, you know, outside of our minds, that we can get rid of all the distractions and then suddenly we'll have this amazing um, inspiration and we'll just pour forth that's an like beautiful point. art on, you know, onto our computer screens or canvases slash anything else you do. Yeah. So, what I think is, um, what's interesting is I, you know, like I didn't find that as much, even right. though my art was suffering during the distracted times, 
I didn't find that inspiration that I thought I would have in the quarantine. And I think, you know, uh, one thing that we do have to understand is that art is a practice. I think a lot of young yes. artists yep. believe art to be something you only do when you're inspired. And I, and I will have to tell you as someone who has written uh, books and, and had contracts, publishers do not care if you write <laughs> when you're inspired. They want their 40,000, 45,000 words, right. regardless of how inspired you've been this year. Right. And so, you know, Madeline Lingle, we both just read the book, uh, Walking yeah. on Water, yeah. talks about right. art as being a practice. It's, it's something you do. Yep. Yes, it's a discipline, just like working out, just like yep. reading, just like eating, essentially. Yep. It's something you do every day. And so I think that if it's not something that you're already doing, even in the business business right. of life, if you're, if you're not already just practicing that every day and you're waiting for inspiration and you think the isolation from the world will give it to you, you are going to be disappointed because yes. that will not happen. Um, That's but an interesting I point. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, just to, to finish, I, I was going to say, I think there's a balance. And I think... Mm -hmm. One thing that I find is that while I had a harder time maybe getting um, time to engage with my art before quarantine, um, after it, I, w I was even less inspired because I feel like a lot of times when I'm with friends, when I'm out, when yeah. I'm doing things, those are the time I'm inspired. Those are the times I'm right. looking at the world and breathing it in, and that will come out later in art. So I think there's this weird balance of um, isolation and going out and being busy that we have to strike and find um, that I, I don't think many of us are very good at, at finding. I'm certainly not. Um, but I think extremes, both of them, um, will have detrimental effect yeah. on us. And I'm, that coupled with inspiration will not happen just because you are in isolation. We are both so brilliant. I was just about to see the same thing. <laughs> um, I was going to bring this to, so, to Dorothy Sayers, who in her, uh, her essay, Toward a Christian Aesthetic, she describes the process of art as you see something real in the world that inspires you. Mm. And then you internalize that and you interpret it and then you create art by taking the way that you have processed and internalized that art and put it out in the world in some way. And that requires you to actually be in the world, living life, interacting with other people in order to be getting that, you know, to use an over intellectualized word for it, that data, that, that stuff that inspires you that 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 does create that because we have this idea that inspiration comes from inside us and it really doesn't the inspiration mm. comes from us interacting with the world and the world affecting us in a particular way it's and more so, filtered through us precisely it's filtered through us we are at we are interpreting it and changing it in a particular way but it starts just like anything else just like being born just like being with child parented just like you know everything that we do as human beings, we do not create things ex nihilo. You know, we only God does that. We take what is done to us and we do something with that. And that's the way it is with art too. And so whenever you're talking about, so that's going to be an interesting direction to go in is like, okay, if, if isolation is not the thing that artists need, um, what is the thing that artists need? What is it the best way to create practices that balance that need for for time to actually sit down and write. Um, so getting away from the things that are getting in the way of your time versus having people who can take care of, you know, other needs that, that you have so you can focus on the writing, but then also being in the world enough to, uh, to, to be inspired and to actually be talking about real things in your art. Yeah, I think, I think it's something you and I have both now mentioned a couple of times, and I think it's balance. And I think the world is not comfortable with balance. Yep. And especially the modern culture is not comfortable with balance. You know, it's just a couple, you know, because I am, because I do write books, a couple of contemporaries of mine, literally this year, both released a book, both big writers about the busyness of the world mm -hmm. and the hustle and mm -hmm. eliminating uh, the, the, you know, the hurry, the busyness in our right. lives. And so I, in both of the books uh, really resonated with people. And I think that is because we live in a very busy, overly um, active, overly uh, stimulating world um, that can really make us feel tired and drained. Yeah. And so it's, it, it doesn't inspire us. It actually does the opposite. It kind of, because we're just worn out by the business in the world. So I think when we live in that kind of culture, and, and especially we live in New York, you know, yes, yes. so if you know, if you think uh, that happens, you know, in a lot of America, it happens to the extreme in New York, you right. can't even step outside without being bombarded by people, things, activities. And so I think we you, you and I both live in this world in which we can be very become very overwhelmed. And sometimes I think I can fantasize I have this fantasy of 
buying a cabin in the mountains right. in Colorado and just staying there for the rest of my life and just be being an you know off the grid artist but i know what would happen and i saw it happen over the quarantine is that um it, it wouldn't give me what i needed ultimately maybe the first two weeks would um yeah. but ultimately i wouldn't have those like you were saying things happening uh, life happening to me in a way that i could right. be inspired to write great things um so i think it is balanced on the other side complete isolation is bad so i think it's finding this this um rhythm yeah. of being in the world, being inspired, connecting to people, connecting to events and things, and then knowing when the right time is to take a step back so you can take what you've gathered and filter, again, filter it into your art. So it's yeah. finding those balances. You know, I told um, Kelia, who, uh, my wife, that, you know, I have, I have this next book that I'm writing. Hmm. And I told her that probably to get this done, I will have to go off alone in a cabin for about a week um, and you know she encourages this and because she knows that I have to be alone right. to work but all of the content of the book every con every piece of the book every every word every story came from living in the world right. the conversations and stories I have with people of doing things so it, again it's finding that balance I think that's really hard for us we live in a really extreme world and I think that's why was, this quarantine was so um, effective on artists is because it was such uh, the opposite extreme so quickly. And it's something that we dreamed of for so long and then it happened and we're going, oh my goodness, I don't know if this is what I needed. So it, it's finding the balance and I don't know how we do it, but. Well, yeah, I, I, was, I was about to ask you. And so now I guess you answered that question. Maybe I was going to ask you, what are some practical steps that you think we can take to find that balance? Mm. You know, I, I think it's, you know, I, I am, a, um, uh, you know, someone who, who, uh, recoils at schedules. I don't like being confined. Mm -hmm. I don't like being sure. told what yeah. to do, but I do think that rhythms are important. And yeah. so it's, it's prioritizing um, the things in your life that you know need it. I don't like right. going to the gym, but I spend, you know, 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes to an hour, three times a week in the gym. And yeah. it's what I need to stay fit, to right. stay healthy mentally, physically. I don't enjoy it. But it's a practice that I've learned, even though I hate scheduling, that when I do it, it benefits me. So I think it's finding these practices that even though it might be hard and it might feel like, well, I'm not going to be inspired then, but it's finding the regular practices of, you know what, I'm going to write not for five hours, but for 20 minutes a day. I'm yeah. going to work on my song. I'm going to work on my screenplay 20 right. to 30 minutes a day. It's, and it's and this is regular um, patterns that you do every day and that will ultimately build into what you create. But if you're waiting, you know, and, and, but finding that balance in inside of your life right now, prioritizing even if just for a half an hour, um, your art, I think uh, that is what does it. And then on the uh, the reverse of that would be prioritizing going out in the world um, yeah. to a healthy extent. So I think it's just gaining control of our lives, owning our lives, and making boundaries and prioritizing the things we know we need to engage with, and not letting things come in between those. Yeah. No, I think I think it is a lot of it's a trial and error thing. You totally try. You, you, it's like, you know, I mean, every, we all know the things that people need to be happy and flourishing. You know, that people need, we need strong friendships. We know that we need, you know, in communities, we know we need, you know, uh, you know, you know, a, a sort of, you know, higher purpose or God, or, you know, you know, so it's like people say, like, okay, you know, make sure that you're involved in your church, make sure that you've got some close friendships, make sure that you've got like, you know, your, your spouse or your significant other or what, or what have you. Um, and know that okay, I need time to for art, and you, uh, you're my art, and and need time to work and, and be making money and things like that. So it's like okay, figuring out what balance of those things you know you that you do, and try different things over a period of time, and figure out okay, this works. I'm when I'm doing this, I feel like I'm getting the most out of life. Like it gets like I've scheduled this amount in of of exercising, and I'm getting a lot out of it. And I'm still having time for these other things that are important to me. So I think really do the thing is you have to do it intentionally and try a lot of yes. things, see what works for you. And the, when you find what works for you, then you keep that thing. And then you work on the other areas that you haven't figured out yet. And you also, if you have, I would ask and one thing I do, it's like, you know, if you have, as you build relationships, if you have people in your life who you are close to, who can actually help you in the things that you're not good at, you know, that gives you more time yes. to actually, you know, it's like, again, like if you, you know, if you have a friend who's an accountant, you know, somebody like who can help you and that you trust, that person can help you streamline your finances. So that's something that you're not 
worried about as much and you can focus on your art more just things like that like they, so your community can be a resource is all i'm saying to help you in the ways that you're weak so you can prioritize the things that you want to do and that you're good at also so those are that's some like, things that are in my mind that's great I, I didn't even think about that how um actually engaging in community might give you more alone time to work on your art because when you're with people who can help you you know i, ha right. I have a friend um who helps me with my finances and helps me with the details of my uh, production company and because he helps me with those i'm able to spend more time writing but exactly. that only came through engaging with community that that's fantastic I like that one of the things i always talk about sort of with community is that you can't force community to happen but you can force opportunities for community to happen and that's yes. what you should prioritize and say okay be in places and do things that will allow you to possibly meet someone who can be a great person to get to know and get to know better and, and that's that, how how we met we yes, met at a yes. film festival we met doing something we both liked right and yeah and then you know what becomes of that but that that's great. exactly and yeah maybe we'll work on a project at some point together you know uh, maybe a podcast or something you know who knows <laughs> <laughs> if you never know what happens when you exactly. go to film festivals yes. but so, yeah. uh, also i'd say one more thing yeah is and this is hard for me um Mm. is learning boundaries is right. learning when to say no and when to say yes yes and it's and it's weighing everything in your life because i'm a person who for a long time said yes to everything oh you want right. to meet up yes oh you want to work on this project together yes and i and i did that for for years i just said yes to everything because i was hungry i wanted to be an actor i wanted to be right. a, a writer so i did everything and i exhausted myself right and what i'm learning in my old age is you still say yes but you say yes when you can when you right. know it's healthy for you right so it's not just turning everything off and going to seclusion and it's not just saying yes to everything again right. i hate to be the guy who's like it's balanced but it is it's yeah. now in my old age i know um when to say yes when i can and when i don't feel that i can or that if i said yes i would be um uh, i would be using my time i'd be taking away from something else in my life that does need attention right. exactly so i think it's learning learning to find those when do you say yes when do you say no um in your life and i think those boundaries will really help artists um find those times of seclusion and times of engage right. engagement with the world that will help and i think that's the journey we you know it's it's a stumbling one along the way but right as we take it i think we'll find that our art and our inspiration will benefit yeah. from now yeah. so uh what we got from here is you know balance finding balance through trial and error uh, leaning on your community when you can and finding the by which you do also do through trial and error, finding that community and learning through that process what your priorities are to set boundaries. And that is how you are able to have a good, flourishing, artistic life, uh, whether you're in isolation, you know, you know, whether you're in a, in a quarantine or not. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. We started this podcast. Yes, you're in the quarantine because we've yes. been talking about it forever, but we started it because we both had time. Uh, yeah. So I guess I guess I did do something this quarantine. You I did. guess I started a podcast. I can always point to that. Exactly. At least I might have not written the great American novel, but um, but it's funny. Through, even through isolation, we started something communal, right. uh, which is funny. <laughs> right. No, it's it's, you know, and that's the thing is, you know, there you, things happen in the world and, you know, and 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 you don't. You don't have a choice what things happen to you and that limits yes. your choices um but you can become the kind of person um just like i said like you know if if before quarantine you were not organized um you're not going to be instantly become organized once you know you were in isolation um but you can build the habits that make it so that you are more able to have a flourishing life um regardless of the situation you're in things could suck but they will suck less if you have disciplined yourself to the degree that you've disciplined yourself. That's great. And, and I want to say one more thing that's kind of um, to something we said in the, in the beginning is, you know, that that whole meme about, you know, Shakespeare wrote King Lear during quarantine. Right. My bet is it wasn't quarantine that inspired the idea of King no. Lear. Yeah. I'm betting that before he was ever quarantined, King Lear had been running through his mind, had, had right. been marinating in his conscience, uh, his conscious and and that he had been thinking about this and when he did arrive at that secluded time then he had things to say right so like you were saying practice being someone who finds inspiration in the world who notices things yeah who thinks about things um and then so that by the time you find yourself 
secluded, you'll actually have something to paint, to write, to draw, exactly. uh, to compose, whatever it is. But be someone who, when you are engaged in the world, is thinking and is engaged fully and, and notices things. Uh, so when you find your alone time, you have some, you can actually use it well. Um, yeah, which is it's interesting because I think a lot of times I just, uh, I just kind of fade through or just glide through life yeah. um, as opposed to fully being engaged. And when I do have that alone time, I'm going, oh, I don't have a lot to say. But yeah. the times that I have, have engaged and have noticed the stories and have noticed the people and the, and the conversations, that is when I find myself alone after having thought about them and, and ingested them, that when I have that alone time, I have things to write about. I have things that inspire yeah. new stories, whatever it might be. So be a person who uses both times well, yeah. um, but, when, but who lives in the world and connects with it fully. So by the time you have that alone time, you'll have something uh, to utilize it with. Well, that's awesome. I can't think of anything to add to that. I guess it's time to go out in the world and be inspired by something else. Um, <laughs> At least go out into the uh, socially distanced world. Precisely, socially distanced world. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, yeah, cool. So now we move on to our segment of uh, blessings and curses. So uh, do you have something to bless and something to curse? I do. Ooh, I'm excited. I do. So because I, because I have been in isolation, I have been playing um, a lot more video games uh, than I usually uh, get to. Mm. And don't worry, I'm still reading. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> on my Bible times, but I have been playing um, more video games. Uh, and there's like, there's this, you know, I, I'm the first one to be the evangelist for video games being the kind of a new art form. But there's this great video game, uh, speaking of isolation, called Firewatch. This is my bless. Ooh, interesting. And Firewatch is one of the most beautiful stories, the music, the aesthetic about a man who literally goes and becomes a firewatch person in the wilderness at the top of a tower and just looks for fires. And he's, the whole game, Ooh. you never see another person. Wow. Um, and you are totally alone in this wilderness, but you hear his thoughts, you hear what he's doing, what he's thinking, you walk in this wilderness and it's just a piece of art. So on the, on the subject of seclusion, um, go play Firewatch. And my curse is a game called Beyond Two Souls, which stars mm. Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe. Um, it was created by the people who created another game I really like called Heavy Rain, which is a mystery. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, it, you know, and it was a big um, success. And Beyond Two Souls came out. Everyone was very excited. I'm playing this right now. And I can't even put my finger on it, but it just feels disjointed. It feels like the, the spaces you inhabit aren't spaces that you're in ha it feels more like you're watching a movie and sometimes sure. hitting a button. And so I would say what Firewatch does amazingly, unfortunately, even with all its production values and A-list actors beyond two souls um, does fairly or poorly. So I'm still gonna finish it, um, but that would be my bless and curse of the week. Joseph? Cool. I would say I just recently for the first time watched a very old movie that was really great. It's, you know, on the waterfront. And Ooh. I, <laughs> I, again, it was one of those movies. I'm still working through like the top 100 American film uh, institutes uh, films, you know, of all time. And that was it was it's it's a really amazing movie to watch because there's a whole context around it because you have someone, the director who did you know testify in the McCarthy hearings um, against some of his other you know fellow uh, wow. actors and people like that. He made the movie. And it's about somebody who is testifying um, against the mob and getting flack for it. Um, and it's, it's, but so the context is really fascinating, but really it is just a, it is a story about somebody finding the courage to do the right thing and the interplay between, you know, there's a preacher in there who ha is passionate about making sure that people, um, uh, that making sure that you know, uh, you know, how to integrate sort of faith into real life. You know, it's, mm. you know, again, it's like the whole, the reason that the movie is called On the Waterfront is he, is it, he says that Christ lives on the waterfront. He lives where the people wow. are who are. I've never seen it. I had no idea it was so spiritually based. Oh yeah, no, it's, 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 you know, Christ is on the waterfront. He's where the people are, where the people are suffering. And that, and that's, so that's where good people need to be as well. And so it wrestles with a lot of these, these issues and, and sort of dark night of the soul about what it costs to do the right thing. And so in, in times where we're actually looking for, we wish more people were doing the right thing, even when it was hard, 
this movie that's all about that is really um, inspiring and helpful to wrestle with because it doesn't make it look easy to do the right thing. And so mm. that's, um, you understand why people don't do the right thing. And then you say, but it doesn't really leave us a responsibility to do it. So I've, I really got a lot out of that. Um, on the other hand, the other spectrum, I'm going to have my curse be the new Netflix series Space Force. Um, oh no, I want it to be good. I know, but, and I, I don't want to spoil things exactly, but they, it starts out really good. It does start out really good because they do a great balance of humor and being political, but not partisan and doing, and then also being funny and sweet and, and dramatic sometimes, but they have a cup, the, the, a couple of characters make a very immoral choice that the that the show kind of affirms that that not only basically makes it it just is justifying a very bad way of doing relationships and makes it seem like it's no big deal um mm. but it does remove some of the dramatic tension because they kind of like oh we can have it both ways where it's like no it drama is created when you have to make a choice and there's a cost to it. And the fact that they kind of say like, oh, there's no cost to having this, making this choice and having this lifestyle and making sort of characters who have a problem with it seem like they're making too big a deal of it is, um, is, is both bad writing narratively and it's very disappointing uh, moral choice in the, the film. And so, and also they very arrogantly decided that they were gonna have a cliffhanger to the next season, which, you know, I think maybe over <laughs> overestimating how, 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 how many people are gonna watch this show. Well, the, Do the, the critics world. like it? I'm interested. I, the critics don't, are very mixed on it. Um, Interesting. But I think they, I, I, I think that they dislike it for the wrong reasons. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> if they would only listen to you, but thank goodness exactly. that you are a film critic. Exactly, exactly. That you understand, you understand. Anyway, so that would be my curse of the week. Sorry, everyone, if you, you're wanting <laughs> for those who want it to be good. But I'll be interested. <laughs> I did. I mean, if, if you see it and you like it, then you can push back on another bless curse segment of the week. So I look forward to that. You, so I'm still. It's like you know, it's it's. 40 minute programs each like a half hour. So it's like, you know, um, and Joseph, but, you are a film critic who does, who do, who does film reviews and talks about films. Where can people read your reviews and get in contact ooh, with you? Ooh, segue. <laughs> segue. Isn't that great? I like it's it so good. good. So proud of you. So yes, you can go uh, find me on Twitter. Normal guy eight. Uh, just also look at Joseph Holmes on Instagram, on uh, Facebook. And then also I have my website, josephholmesstudios.com. And how about you, Nathan Clarkson, if people want to find what you do and what you have to say, because you have a lot of great things that you do all the time in film and art and authorship and all sorts of stuff like that. What can people find you? Well, first, I want to comment your Twitter handle is normal guy eight. That must mean there are seven other normal guys out there. Yeah, only seven. Exactly. <laughs> you can find me on uh, pretty much all the socials. Well, I say that mostly Instagram and Facebook, you can <laughs> yeah. find um, uh, Just search my name, Nathan Clarkson, and my website is nathanclarkson.me. And we now have a website that you can visit and you can what? find information about us. We'll probably be putting up some film reviews and some, some of our thoughts and different happenings of uh, all the things, faith, film, philosophy, art, et cetera, in the world um, as time goes by. So keep a lookout for that. But you can connect with us there and send us all your uh, love letters and hate mail. And the website is uh, theoverthinkersjournal.com. So please jump on there and connect with us. We'd so love official to hear sounding. Thoughts. Oh, yeah, it is. It's quite official. It is actually literally official. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for joining in your isolation or in your busyness. And remember, whether you're isolated or busy, if it's worth thinking about, it's worth overthinking about. Mm -hmm.